Hey, what's up, ghouls and gals? It's me, Ryan T here, and welcome to another edition of the Almighty TRTS Podcast. That's right, ghouls and gals. I'm back with another episode of the uh, latest and greatest podcast in the in this side of the Rio Grande Valley River. Um, <laughs> but yeah, ghouls and gals, uh, we're going at it solo today. Sid Retro is uh, taking a vacation in Puerto Rico. And I don't know why I said it like that. That's just how, like, when I, the word Puerto Rico came into my brain, that's the for some reason why, like, I, I felt I felt like that's how I should say it. Like I feel like I'd be doing a disservice to the people of Puerto Rico if I didn't say it that way. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah. Anyways, it's just me and you tonight, baby. Just me and you tonight. Turn the lights down. Pull the shades down because we're gonna be fucking. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no ghouls and gals i got a fucking great show for you all planned tonight um tonight we're going to be uh reacting to the beverly hills cop 4 trailer that's right they've made four of these bad boys so far we're going to be reacting to that bad boy as well as the civil war trailer and i ain't talking about captain america and iron man motherfucker i'm talking about that a24 civil war motherfucker um it's gonna i mean it sounds a lot cooler than it actually is it is cool don't get me wrong i mean but it isn't uh all their characters from all the a24 movies you know what i mean uh picking sides on some uh political and philosophical war where they then have to turn against each other and fight fight each other at a uh, airport which that sounds fucking amazing a24 get on that i want the real a24 civil war i want to see like black philip fighting against fucking uh <laughs> fucking uh simon rex's character from like red rocket you know what i mean or and i want to see fucking uh you know what i, I want to see fucking uh, adam sandler from fucking uncut gems fighting against fucking uh zola and shit like that <laughs> some deep cut a24 references for you motherfuckers you know what i mean but uh yeah that'd be fucking amazing but yeah we got that planned for the show we also got a little bit of entertainment news uh but before we get into that ghouls and gals uh how the fuck are you how the fuck have you been leave a fucking comment below and let me know how the fuck you're doing <laughs> i'm just kidding but yeah leave a comment below and let me know how you ghouls and gals y'all are doing man i always love to know how y'all are doing what y'all are doing why y'all are doing it i swear to god i am not the police i'm just your friend and i'm interested in your life <laughs> but uh yeah man uh me i've just been fucking working hanging out doing the damn thing trying to get into the christmas spirit uh bought all the fucking presents on fucking amazon because i'm the man of a fu i'm the man of fucking the future you know what i mean tomorrow is today motherfucker that kind of shit you know what i mean so i used a service a service that's been existing for like decades now at this point but <laughs> but you know what i mean it, it always like it always freaks me out how fucking simple and how fucking easy it is to just get stuff from like amazon you know what i mean like i'm a little bit like older you know what i mean so like i feel like whenever uh you, I, you know when i was a kid growing up you would go to the fucking mall you go to the mall there was no like amazon you go to the mall or you go to walmart you go to target you know what i mean if you're if you're if you're a fucking uh parents had a little bit more change in their pocket they're gonna fucking ba balling on the scrubs over there at walmart and on the fucking peasants at walmart and be like we buy stuff at target the same thing for double the prize <laughs> but uh yeah it just, it just always baffles me and amazes me that uh you can just buy all this amazing shit like with the click of a fucking button i got really like fucking buzzed the other day and just like just started drinking like a wild man no, i'm just kidding i just started i got a good buzz on and then i was like why don't i just like buy all the presents now so uh ryan claus came out to play and i just bought all the fucking presents it was uh it was amazing hopefully you all have done y'all's uh christmas shopping um the gift that keeps on giving is the uh subscription to the uh, ryan t show podcast uh twitch channel as well as uh a subscription to the uh youtube channel all the channels twitter uh not twitter fuck twitter fuck twitter <laughs> you know speaking of twitter i mean kind of out of left field here but i haven't been really fucking with twitter that much have y'all been fucking with twitter a lot i haven't been fucking with twitter a whole bunch i've been fucking with threads threads is where it's at i mean for some reason i know i guess it's because it's in its infancy but it is so 
pre- precious. The community there is so fucking nice, and they're so like wanting to see you win, and they actually like comment on your stuff and like your stuff, as opposed to Twitter, which which feels like a digital hellscape of like racism and right wing a political commentary and people just telling other people that they're fucking gay and like <laughs> losers and lame and like you just basically screaming into the void with some guy standing next to you also screaming into the void it just feels like an interaction list like hellscape where people are kind of just like yelling over one another and kind of just like never getting any points across or anything creative at all it definitely isn't the digital town square that elon musk uh, wanted it to be it feels more like a digital hellscape like fucking uh satan wanted it to be <laughs> but yeah uh twitch is in the dumpster Tw- uh, not Twitch. Sorry, Twitch. Not Twitch. Don't kick me off of Twitch. Twitch is not in the dumpster. I meant Twitter. X. X ain't gonna give it to you. Uh, and Threads is rising from the ashes like a beautiful fucking phoenix. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's what's been going on with me. I've been engaging in the social media wars. <laughs> and uh, But yeah, man, just like work. And speaking of work, tomorrow I have my office Christmas party. And all those are always fucking interesting. I want to see who gets like super fucking wasted and who gets like out of pocket. You know what I mean? It's always funny to see like those people get super drunk at the office Christmas party. And then you have to see them the following Monday. And you're just kind of like, ugh. Some demons came out there in that party, motherfucker. We know. We know your secrets. <laughs> it's, it's, it's always funny, you know what I mean? Like, you work with these people every day. You see them probably like 80 to 90% of your fucking time. You know what I mean? You work, especially if you work full time. And you just like never really interact with them on that level you know what i mean it's just kind of like high buy basis customer service voice only type thing and then like you add like liquor to the mix and kind of everybody gets kind of laxed and laid back and you kind of see like how everybody really is and you know what i mean some motherfuckers are characters out there so that's uh, always really interesting we'll report back next week and let y'all know how that goes down so that should be uh, pretty fucking interesting but enough of that about, about my personal chatter enough about my uh mindless uh, small talk uh let's get to the news motherfuckers let's get to the uh first segment of the night uh i wanted to check this one out first because this trailer looks seriously fucking heavy this looks like some heavy shit that we got here on our hands ghouls and gals and that is the trailer for civil war the a24 film civil war directed by alex garland starring kirsten dunst mj forever and uh wagner mura stephanie mckinley henderson kaylee spinney and uh i i also think um Kirsten Dunst's husband, uh, the blonde guy that all, that came out in Breaking Bad that plays like the cop. He always plays like a cop for some reason. He's also a cop in this as well. Uh, but yeah, he's in Jesse Plemons. Oh, fuck, I am good. That was like on the tip of like I almost I almost was going to hit play on this fucking trailer without saying the name of that fucking guy. And it was going to make me lose all the credibility in the world and drive me fucking nuts throughout the entire goddamn motherfucking... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the, whole, the whole podcast. Uh, but yeah, Jesse Plemons also stars in this. But enough of my talking. Let's check out the trailer for Civil War. Let's see what we got on our hands, girls and the gals. One, two, three. Let's go. 19 states have seceded. Ooh. The White House issued warnings. Jesus Christ, was there was what all those cars fucking Teslas? Let me know if you want to try anything. Wrecking in with the autopilot. Huge civil war going on all across. No civil war, you say? Try to stay out with what we see on the. Me too, girl. I try to stay out of that political bullshit. Unless they make a movie about it, then I'll watch it and review it, <laughs> and act like I know everything about it. The so-called Western forces of Texas and California. Oh, Nick Offerman as the president? Fuck yeah, count me in. Defeat at the hands of the United States military. This is already so surreal and scary. Imagine bombs going off like in America, like in New York or something like that, or like in Texas for that, you know what I mean? Aside from like 9-11, like just like actual bombs going off in your neighborhood. Jesus. Every time I survived the war zone, I thought Okay, I was so they're war journalists. Don't do that. Trying to cover the Civil War. But here we are. 
There's some kind of misunderstanding here. What? Jesse you... Plemons. Oh, those glasses are fucking tight. I want those glasses. Okay. Want those okay. racist okay. glasses. <laughs> Why is he, he always plays like an army guy or a cop or something? <laughs> this spring. Right, America in like 10 years. <laughs> Hopefully not, Jesus Christ, fuck. I'm gonna be watching this movie like gripping like the seat at the movie theater like this, like, oh, oh. <laughs> One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Yo! This looks insane! This looks literally insane. This also looks too fucking realistic. This looks like some shit that they would be playing on Fox News or something, like right now. Oh my god. That is so real. Holy shit. That is real as it gets. Whoa. I want to replay that trailer again. I want to see that bad boy. I want to see that bad boy again because holy crap. Holy crap. That shit. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna play it again up here. But I'm gonna cut the, uh... Oh, what the fuck? States have okay, there we go. Uh, but yeah. Whoa! That trailer. Super impactful. Super right now. Super fresh. Super poignant. Uh, that's a word you can use in this situation, right? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Whoa, this movie looks literally like what's going on, like, on, in the news, like, right now. Except it's not happening, like, in America. It's happening, you know, overseas. But, uh, yeah, I'm at, just, whoa, whoa. That's, I feel, I feel like that's the only thing I can say about this movie. It's just like, whoa. And I am definitely going to be watching it. Definitely going to be reviewing it. And this movie, apparently people are, like, really fucking with this movie because it has 2.3 million views as of right now. This just came out yesterday, December 13th. This just came out yesterday, December 13th. And it already has 2.3 million views on YouTube. It's number five on trending. And I want to say it was trending on uh, Twitter earlier or X earlier, the digital hellscape formerly known as Twitter. Uh, but, yeah... Whoa, Alex Garland, he was fucking cooking. He is a master fucking chef in the kitchen right now. That is Civil War. This looks insane. Like, whoa. I can't wait to check this out. This is going to be great. I was going to go check the comments to let y'all know what people are saying in the comments. And the first comment that I saw <laughs> was a comment that I put. And it says, this is true horror. Oh, God, I'm such a fucking dork <laughs> but i'm not gonna lie i was really excited to see this trailer i saw the poster go up online on 824 of course the fucking hipster guy with a podcast follows 824 what else is new water's wet uh but yeah i saw the uh poster go up online there was zero context for it aside for a aside from the release date which is uh, april 26 of next year 2024 um and i was instantly intrigued by it i was like what is this what is this movie what is civil war this definitely ain't iron man and captain america going around and uh hitting each other with the uh, with the shields and the hammers of justice um but yeah whoa this looks incredible. Cannot wait to check this out. This is a day one watch for me. Hell yeah. Really wish Sid was here so he could <laughs> react react to this trailer. I bet you he would be like, what the fuck? Right? Can't, cue the sad music. Can you tell that I miss Sid? Tell me how am I supposed to live without you, Sid? <laughs> if you're out there, buddy, we miss you. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, cannot wait to check this out. This looks, uh, really fucking good. Uh, moving on to our next story of the night, our next trailer of the night, and uh, that is Axel Foley, uh, Beverly Hills Cop Axel Foley, aka Beverly Hills Cop 4. <clears throat> yeah, this is another one that I, uh, 
really, really am excited for, uh, regardless of Eddie Murphy just, like, constantly shitting the fucking bed recently uh, with Candy Cane Lane. Holy fucking shit, Candy Cane Lane was so goddamn bad. That movie was so goddamn bad that it made me almost, almost, but not quite excited for uh beverly hills cop 4 but i love axel foley love the first film hell i love all the goddamn films i don't know what it is about uh beverly hills cop back to the future those like 80s like 80s franchises i really fucking like love the 80s french i don't know why i just really love beverly hills cop and back to the future they just feel like prime 80s like cinema they just like capture this kind of like feel for me that like other movies don't really capture for me you know what i mean and i don't know why but beverly hills cop even though it's like nowhere adjacent to a christmas movie has always remind always made me feel like i'm watching a christmas movie i guess because i've always watched it around like christmas time i i don't know i always watch it when it's cold i don't know but whatever it is I guess it's just nostalgic for me, whatever. But uh, yeah, man, I was a little hesitant with this movie because, again, Eddie Murphy's been shit in the fucking bed. <clears throat> been shit in the fucking bed. His recent movies have not been good. I was going to say uh, Eddie Murphy in uh, A Haunted House, but that was like fucking a million years ago. But uh, yeah, Candy Cane Lane was not good. Coming to America was not good. The sequel to Coming to America. The sequel to Coming to America. And yeah, I just really want Eddie Murphy to have a win. You know what I mean? I just really want Eddie Murphy to have a win. I mean, you know, other than him being a millionaire and like winning at life, you know, and being successful. I just really want the guy to win. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, but <clears throat> I like Eddie Murphy. I think he's hilarious. I just really want him to come out in a good comedy movie before he just like gives up on making movies in general. You know what I mean? A man can only flop so many times until... You're just like, all right, this isn't working out. We're just going to, you know, not make these anymore. You know what I mean? So hopefully this one does good for him. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to check out that bad boy right now. And also, You People. Oh, my God. Do you all remember You People? The movie where they had uh, Jonah Hill kiss that poor woman and, like, she didn't want to kiss him so bad that they had to fucking do, like, weird CGI. So when they got close to each other, it looked like their, like, faces, like, morphed into each other. Like, some sort of weird fucking thing that would come out, like, in Stranger Things. But, whatever. We're not here to talk about that. We're here to watch the trailer for Beverly Hills Cop Axel F. Which is weird that they don't call it Beverly Hills Cop 4. But, whatever. Let's get going. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. I almost admire The trailer's you. starting. Oh, God. I, st <laughs> I almost am. Detroit, baby! <clears throat> I'm just amazed. That's Kevin Bacon. I can already tell. The Baconator. I know the Baconator when I hear him. I know my man, the Baconator. Kevin Bake! Oh! Love the Axel F uh, fucking theme song. They love me in Beverly Hills. Yo, Paul Reiser. I'm liking the vibe of this. Joseph Gordon Levitt, JGL. Liking the cast, liking the vibe. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I like this. I'm liking this. Got like a Bad Boys vibe mixed with a little bit of the Eddie Murphy vibe. Why didn't he do the laugh? Why didn't he do the Eddie Murphy? <laughs> How come he didn't do that laugh? That's my favorite thing Eddie Murphy does. Oh my god. Both these motherfuckers are still around? Oh wow. But yeah. Fuck yes. That looks awesome i am super excited to see uh eddie murphy make a return into a good movie like i said i am just like fucking tired of eddie murphy just coming out in good movies i'm just tired of watching uh, bad movies in general <laughs> you know what i mean i just don't want to just want to see any more bad movies just tired of the bad movies 
you know, and uh, especially ones with people that I like in them. But, uh, yeah, Eddie Murphy looks good in this bad boy here. I like the vibes of it. I'm digging the bad boys vibe mixed with the Eddie Murphy classic vibes. I like that. That looks like they dialed up the action a little bit more, made it a little bit more modern. And I like that. It looks like they're going to go for uh, maybe an R rating. I hope they go for an R rating. I, I want to say that the original one was rated R, right? Fucking... Uh, Beverly Hills Cop, the original one, rated R, rated R comedy. Doesn't he say fucking it? I don't know. I'm not, I'm looking it up. I'm not finding it. But uh, you know, I know guys, riveting, riveting fucking stuff. Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah, I'm gonna say Beverly Hills Cop was rated R, motherfucker. I want to say uh, Eddie Murphy was like dropping motherfuckers, and that was like peak Eddie Murphy. That had to that's, that 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 bad boy has to be rated R. Speaking of, you know what? I'm gonna watch me some Beverly Hills Cop, and I'm gonna report back to y'all. Just stay right there. I'll be right back. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Beverly Hills Cop, uh, Part Four, Axel F. I don't know why they're calling it that. I don't like that title, but I do fuck with the movie. The trailer looks good. It looks decent. It looks like a decent movie. It doesn't look like the trailers like for his previous movies, like Candy Cane Lane, You People. Coming to America, where you're instantly like, "Fuck, this looks terrible." This looks decent. This looks this looks palatable, and I also like that it's for free. It's on Netflix. I don't have to pay to watch it again. I just have to pay the uh, forty dollar uh, subscription fee that Netflix is now charging every fucking month. What the? You know what? Let's take a little detour to Rantville for a second. What the fuck is up with that? Speaking of, uh, you know, streaming services and all that shit. <clears throat> why? The fuck does it feel like every other fucking, like, two months or three months, they are raising the fucking prices of these streaming services, and they are, like, removing shit that people fucking like. You would think if they're like, hey, we're gonna raise the fucking price, we should add more of the shit that people like to watch. Looking at you, Netflix. Uh, looking at you, Peacock. Looking at you, Hulu. Jesus, like, you know, and especially HBO fucking Max, you know what I mean? HBO Max sent me an email the other fucking day, and they were like, hey, good news, we're not, we're not gonna raise the price or anything, but we're just gonna fucking cuck you out of uh, more shit. We're gonna fucking make the price that you're paying right now, which is fifteen ninety nine. we're gonna make that the lowest tier, the, where you're still not gonna get ads, but we're gonna give you shitty fucking resolution. No more 4K resolution for you, mister. If you want that, you're gonna have to pay fucking 20 three dollars a fucking month what the fuckity fuck 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 bullshit is that you know what i mean and why (laughs) and the way that they worded it they worded it as if it was like a good thing like good news we're gonna fucking hoe you out and rape you for fucking more money (laughs) if you want more money to get the same old shit that you you, that you've been getting uh if you don't want your fucking uh shows and fucking movies to look like they're fucking filmed on on a potato give us more money good news what the fuck good news fuck you bitch you know what i mean like what the fuck ah i need to take a break uh we'll be back after these messages serious than a boy believing or not believing in Santa Claus. You need to sit down with Charlie. Explain to him you are not Santa Claus. There's no reason why we have to tell anybody about the North Pole. I want to keep this secret. So, uh, what have you been telling him? Nothing. Dad took me to the North Pole. The North Pole? Yeah, Dad's the new Santa. I never thought you would stoop to changing your physical appearance. Do you have any concept of how dangerous this is? Charlie, he's not Santa. He is too Santa! Scott? Charlie! Hello? Who gave you permission to tell Charlie there's no Santa Claus? I think if we're going to destroy our 
are such illusions. I should be a part of it. Name? Chris Kringle. Name? Santa Claus. Holy shit! Tim Allen <clears throat> is a sinister looking motherfucker when you put some goddamn uh, horror movie music or over him. Holy fuck. Speaking of Tim Allen, I was reading on Twitter the other day, the hellscape formerly known as Twitter, uh, that he's like a fucking mega dickhead to work with. Apparently, uh, this chick that worked with him on the uh, Disney Plus uh, Santa Claus series was like, he's a huge fucking asshole. Everybody around him like hates him and he just like makes everybody so uncomfortable and he's a fucking dickhead to work with. I just really hated working with him. And then she guy called him like a little bitch. <laughs> I like the new version of, like, Hollywood celebrities, and, like, they're messy as fuck. Like, they're just out here, like, calling people bitches, like, airing out all their dirty laundry. Like, I like the new celebrity them. You know what I mean? I like that they're just out here being, like, messy as fuck and just, like, talking about all this, like, drama, juicy shit for us, like, uh, greasy fucking podcasters to talk about to our uh, legions of audiences. But in my, in my case, uh, the... One person that watches me in their uh, mother's basement. No, I'm just kidding. I love you all so very fucking much. If you're watching right now, I love you so much. Thank you. That is my Christmas present. Um, all you ghouls and gals uh, that watch me whenever my stupid ass goes fucking live. Um, and also, uh, fun fact. Somehow, KFC has convinced the Asian world, the world of Asia, the people in it, uh, Japan, Tokyo, all those people, uh, that we eat, uh, KFC for Christmas. Yeah, they think that we eat KFC for Christmas, so now they eat KFC for Christmas, which is fucking wild, because we eat KFC every fucking day. We don't need any excuse to eat KFC. Us as Americans, that's one thing I will say. We don't need any excuse to throw down some fucking fried chicken or a bunch of fucking food for any matter. We will have a smorgasbord of food, a party, especially if you're like me, a Mexican. We will have a fucking party for anything. Your fucking grandma fell down the stairs. Let's have a party. Your fucking got fired from your job. Let's have a party. You got a new job. Let's have a party. You lost a new job that you just got hired on. Let's have a party. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Yeah, that doesn't uh, surprise me one bit at all. That Chinese people and Asian people think that we're just, like, partying out and shit like that. Uh, but anyways, uh, back to the uh, show that we were, that we're currently recording. Sorry, I had, like, a very, like, uh, what the uh, kids call a fucking high moment. <laughs> but yeah, going back to my rant about fucking streaming services... One of the streaming services that I actually really like because it's fucking free. That's, you know, I'm ghetto, man. Uh, if it's free, it's for me. Especially when it comes to fucking TV. I don't need to be paying for any more fucking streaming services. Uh, but uh, Tubi has partnered up with uh, Warner Brothers to uh, bring all the DC movies to the Tubi streaming service for free. And it includes new releases like uh, Robert, Pattinson, uh, Robert Pattinson and Matt Reeves' The Batman. And uh, people have lost their collective fucking minds on the internet. The reactions and opinions to this were very mixed, which is really fucking weird to me. The opinions on this raise, uh, fucking range from, LOL, DC down bad, they must need money, fucking broke as hell, to like people complaining that, uh, why would they bring their content to an ad-supported uh, streaming service? to reactions like mine of like why are y'all fucking mad about this are y'all really mad that we're getting free shit all the fucking time 
people, myself included, complain about how much all these fucking bullshit streaming services fucking cost on top of the cost of internet. And the one fucking time that one of these motherfuckers wants to give us something for free, we're going to bitch and moan about it. Oh, please don't give me more quality movies on this free streaming service. Don't give me more free things, please. I would rather pay for it because I'm a fucking idiot and I'm reckless with my fucking money. Like, what planet are you living on that you don't like more free? I didn't understand that. That's one thing I didn't understand. Like, everything's expensive now, including movies to watch at your home. We're even getting charged just to be at home. You know, aside from rent, we get charged to watch movies and shit. And I don't understand why people would be reacting negative to, negative to, negatively to, like, getting more free stuff. So what? You gotta watch a commercial or two or three if the movie's, like, super long. It's for free! Who cares? You're at your house. Go fucking smoke outside when the commercial comes on. Go take a piss. Go bang your wife. Go get a beer. Speaking of beer, I gotta pop this bad boy open. We're drinking fire, uh, four firemen's beer. I'm not a fireman, but... I can drink like one. Anyways, yeah, go fuck your wife. Go do something while the commercial's on. It ain't that big of a deal. We've uh, had commercials. Maybe this new generation just, like, isn't, like, used to commercials. Or we've been babied so much to the point to where we're, like, commercials are, like, the fucking devil. We're, like, Bobby Boucher's mom. We're, like, commercials are the devil, Bobby. You know what I mean? And it's, like, who cares? I don't care about a commercial. A commercial is, is, is that. It gives me a break. I get up from the fucking couch. Go get another drink. Go get something to eat, go take a piss, you know, like live life for a second, then come back and continue to rot my brain and watch whatever that I'm watching. So, Tubi, this drink's for you. Oh, that is good. I had never had that beer before, but it is really good. That was a gamble on my part. They didn't have the normal IPA that I usually get from the HEB. And I went down there. They had this fireman one. It was bright Christmas red. It just stood out to me. And I was like, that's the one. That's the one I'm fucking getting. Uh, But yeah, Tubi, you're the best. You're out here. You're doing the Lord's work, Tubi. You're out here giving people free content, free media, free movies, free classic TV, free horror, free uh, porno adjacent movies. I like titties. I like to watch them for free. So thank you, Tubi. You're the best. Um... Speaking of movies uh, that are high quality, A24. Why did I say it like that? High quality. (laughs) What what is going on with me? Uh, Speaking of uh, movies that are high quality, uh, A24 has teamed up with iconic Metal Gear Solid creator Hido Kojima uh, to make a live action movie based on his game Death Stranding, a.k.a. Walking Simulator starring Norman Reedus. Um, Here is the official statement. We've partnered with Kojima Productions on the live action feature film adaptation of Hido Kojima's Death Stranding. (laughs) But no, all kidding aside, uh, I've never played the game. That's just what I've heard online. But uh, I'm interested in this. Um, I've seen uh, gameplay of this game, and, you know, it's Norman Reedus, uh, Mads Mikkelsen, uh, Guillermo del Toro is in it, Conan O'Brien is in it. It has a uh, really stacked, uh, star-studded cast, Uh, so I'd be really interested in uh, how they're going to adapt this to the big screen. Plus, uh, Hideo uh, Kojima, I know I'm butchering his name, um, is a fucking cinephile. This motherfucker is always talking about movies on his uh, social media. I follow him on the uh, Hellscape, formerly known as Twitter, as well as like Threads and Instagram. This guy like bleeds and lives movies. I think like half of his body is just like a movie. Like he is an A24 person. Uh, but yeah, I'm really interested in this. Uh, I might even download Death Stranding uh, and play that bad boy on uh, on Xbox Game Pass or wherever I can get it. Uh, because yeah, this looks super interesting. I know like it's about uh, walking, obviously, and there's a uh, baby in an incubator involved, and like I think uh, Norman Reedus is like a postman <laughs> or something, and he's delivering a fetus to somebody. I think he's delivering a fetus to Conan O'Brien. So Conan O'Brien can then feed it to Guillermo del Toro? No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea what the fucking premise of this game is. I feel like the people involved 
in this game don't even know what the premise to this game is because I've seen trailer the trailer for this game and I still had no idea what it was about. I don't know, maybe I'm getting dumber the older I get, but or my media my media literacy is going down. Uh, but yeah, I had no idea what that uh, game uh, was about. But uh, here's the man right here uh, at A24 headquarters with the official A24 Death Stranding inspired logo. My man just looks like he is trying to hold back the biggest smile of a fucking lifetime. He's like, I did it. I did it. I'm making a movie. I did it. Like, you know, he has a massive boner and more power to him. I love it. When one of us film nerds actually gets to make a fucking film. I hope my boy's film is successful. I will be there day one to check it out. Um, we need more good... Uh, more good. We need uh, good uh, video game adaptations. The Last of Us can't hold us over for fucking ever. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah. Oh, speaking of The Last of Us. Now that we're on the subject of games. Holy shit. Did y'all watch the Game Awards? That motherfucker was... Slightly boring, but had a lot of good announcements. I'm a video game nerd, so I sat through that whole motherfucker, just like white knuckled it, and just like sat through all the boring speeches, all the boring celebrity cameos, just so I could see uh, some good gaming news. And they did not diss a fucking point. We are getting uh, Jet Set Radio Future. Oh my God, Sega! Thank you so fucking much. Sega is bringing back uh, the. Uh, classic Jet Set Radio Future franchise as well as a bunch of other classic Sega franchises and I'm just glad Sega's gonna get back into the mix. Those motherfuckers been gone drinking Mountain Dew since like the late like 90s, mid 90s and uh, yeah, it's just really interesting to see them get back into the into the fold, into the gaming fold uh, but yeah, that was a, a huge announcement um, I really was like fucking psyched for that and then they also had Dragon Ball Z uh, the, the new Budokai Tekai game and holy shit that looks amazing games just keep getting better and better and better and i cannot wait uh, to play that those were my personal picks for the um for the uh things that came out of the game awards that like really interested it really interested me uh the fuck man i just can't wait to uh check out those fucking games man and speaking of game award shows uh e3 e3 is finally dead it's they finally put that motherfucker to rest it was on hospice on life assist uh it was brought back from the dead but this time it is officially dead and buried the uh once uh one stop shop for all video game major video game announcements as well as console announcements and anything any big news to do with video games would happen at e3 uh now it's done that was one of the last remnants, the last remaining effects of COVID. COVID took out E3. Low viewership took out E3. Uh, video game companies just wanting to do their own thing and make their own presentations, do their own directs. Now we have, uh, you know, Nintendo directs, uh, the current state of plays, uh, Xbox weeklies. You know what I mean? We have all that shit now. We don't have a fucking reason for E3 anymore. And uh, Jeff uh, Knightley, the guy that, or Kingley, or whatever the fuck his name is, uh, the one that guy that does the game awards, you know, pretty much like made sure that uh, E3, you know, subsequently fucking died with uh, with the game awards. You know what I mean? There was no coming back from that. Once my boy unleashed the dragon, that was the game awards. E3 was just, you know, the days were numbered. And uh, yeah, so pour one out for E3. E3, this one's for you. Uh, thanks for the memories, even though they were awkward as fuck. If, if any of y'all are fucking gamers or watch YouTube, y'all know those motherfuckers had some awkward as fuck award shows, man. Jesus Christ. But this one's for you, uh, E3. Uh, speaking of awkward, moving on to something that I think is really fucking awkward. And that's uh, this poster right here. What the fuck is this? Holy fuck. This poster is really fucking bad. Don't get me wrong. I like Dakota Johnson. Dakota Johnson is a fucking baddie. I love her in that uh, movie with fucking Jeff Bridges uh, and Thor. I forget the name of it. I want to say that it's uh, Knights at the something. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember what the name of the movie is. Um, but yeah. 
I like her in that. I like her in whatever she comes out in. She's good. Knights at the El Rio. El Rio or something. No? Nobody? Nobody? Anyways. Um, this Madam Web poster is uh, fucking terrible. Uh, Bad Times at the El Royale. Fuck yeah, I knew that's what it was called. But yeah, this Madam Web poster is fucking terrible. We have all these digital artists. We have all these people doing amazing things on uh, on TikTok, on Instagram, on Pinterest and they couldn't be bothered to hire one of those motherfuckers. They did the typical classic Sony bullshit of like uh, making the worst fucking imaginable decisions when it comes to these Spider-Man adjacent movies. Which... <clears throat> I think I've cracked the code on the uh, Sony movie marketing formula. I think these motherfuckers really want us to hate these movies. I think they want us to hate these movies so fucking much that we talk about these movies endlessly and talk about how much we fucking hate them and give them free publicity and go to the movie theater to hate watch these movies to make sure that we are correct in saying that this movie really sucks uh yeah i think that's sony's fucking marketing strategy because i think that's the only reason why we're gonna have why we have three venom movies while we have a morbius movie while we're getting a craven movie while we're getting this this fucking abomination over here uh yeah i there these movies have to be making fucking money for them to just keep fucking pumping these bad boys out and uh that's not the only madam web poster there's this bad boy right here which is a whole other level of fucking bad this is also fucking bad it's the same madam web poster it's this but just with more people so this but with more people <laughs> Look at that. This. But with more people. Like, they couldn't even be bothered to make a whole new poster. They were like, just add more people on top of the original existing poster. Just go to uh, CapCut or one of those apps in your phone and digitally add clips, like little pictures from the trailer onto the pictures of Dakota Johnson and just call it a day. <laughs> and I also like that this movie has the fucking balls the fucking balls on this movie to release on February 14th on Valentine's Day. This movie thinks that people are going to spend the one uh, day that they can together as a couple to go watch fucking Madam Web. Is that what they think people are going to do on, Mad on, on fucking Valentine's Day? Hey, honey, you want to see uh, Madam Web? Is Spider-Man in it? Is, it? is it a movie about a girl Spider-Man? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah who i i don't know who this movie's for i don't know who this movie's for i mean i mean aside from the people you know perverts like me that just want to see uh sydney sweeney in a uh, skin in a skin tied uh, spider-man spider-woman outfit uh but yeah aside from that who is this movie for i mean I get, I mean, who, no, madam, nobody's fucking with Madam Web like that. You know what I mean? I promise you, I promise you, nobody's fucking with Madam Web like that. I mean, my biggest, uh, interaction with Madam Web is the old lady version from the 90s Spider Man cartoon when she would always pop up and just like lecture, uh, Spider Man all the time. And she'd be like, Peter Parker, you must choose. And like, we're obviously. You know, uh, I always forget which way to point. We're obviously not getting that with this version. We're getting the a uh, sexy Madam Web with like, we're all, you know, I will say this: this is arguably going to be one of like the hottest superhero movies that come out in uh, February. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, I feel like that's all this movie kind of has going for it: like really hot chicks in uh, superhero outfits. That I guarantee you. We will only see these chicks. We're only going to see Sydney Sweeney in that Spider Woman outfit for like two seconds, for like a minute, like in a flashback. We're only, yeah, that's the only spider action that we're going to be getting. And speaking of spider action, when the fuck are we going to get Spider Man in one of these movies? I'm tired of this bullshit of them just like. You know, in every trailer, in every movie, like, you know, someone, like, steps on a spider or sees a spider web, or in this case, names their movie Web. You know what I mean? And they're like, oh, yeah, we referenced the guy. We did the thing. Uh, uh. You know what I mean? And it's like, quit fucking with me. You know what I mean? Like, Into the Spider-Verse has an actual Spider-Man. They have actual Spider-Mens. 
You know what I mean? Y'all can't even have a one. Y'all can't have Ben Riley. Y'all can't have Kane. Y'all can't have nobody. Like y'all can't even have a ma a made up one. One you just make up on your own and piss off everybody. At least do that. At least do something original. Sony Universe. Like Jesus fucking Christ. Like what the fuck are y'all smoking over there that y'all think that we want a fucking Craven movie? Like I'm glad that y'all you know stop smoking fucking crack or whatever over there for a second and realize like oh nobody wants an El Muerto movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, nobody wanted that. Duh. You know, so it's it's like crazy. Like I don't understand what the end game is with these movies or what the plan is with these movies aside from you know obviously like we got to pump out one of these bad boys every now and again so we can keep the uh spider-man uh you know license or whatever and it's like dude do something with these movies you know have some interconnectability with these movies you have so many of them they feel like fucking stray dogs like a pack of stray dogs none of them are related and none of them belong together they're just kind of like out in the world you know what i mean but uh, enough of me shitting on uh, Madam Web. I think I think people get it. I don't like it. Uh, speaking of uh, superheroes, a character that I do like, the Black Panther, will be uh, getting a new life at, in a new animated series for Disney Plus called Eyes of Wakanda. Um, the official. Uh, a uh, quote for it is uh, throughout Wakandan history brave warriors have been tasked to travel the world retrieving dangerous vibranium artifacts this is their story so it looks like it will be uh, not focusing on Black Panther so scratch that I don't want to watch this show now <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I don't like the idea of uh, stuff based on popular shit and it doesn't feature the popular character that it's based on. Like, I don't want to watch a show about Batman that doesn't feature Batman. I don't want to watch a show about Black Panther that doesn't feature Black Panther. I I don't like that. I don't. I, what is the point of that? I I, I hate the current th uh, the current uh, mindset at Marvel and at Disney. They're like, why don't we just give everybody a spinoff? Hey, that guy that was cleaning up the debris and rubble in the Avengers battle. Why don't we give him a spinoff? We'll call it Janitor Tales, Marvel Tales. You know what I mean? It's like, chill with the spinoffs. We don't need a spinoff for everybody. I don't need to see the fucking janitors of w fucking Wakanda. Or whatever the fuck this is. I don't need to see Marco Polo Wakanda edition. You know what I mean? I don't need to see a uh, fucking animated movie of people. Get you, get, did you get the vibranium? Oh yes. Nothing cool happens to us. We just get the vibranium. And we watch the master's penis and his feet. I don't want to watch the movie. I don't want to watch the movie or the show about the uh, royal penis watch washer. You know what I mean? I want to see Black Panther. It's animated. We can't just get an animated Black Panther. We can't even get Black Panther an animated version. Speaking of that, when are we going to get a new Black Panther? Yeah, I said it. I'm tired of fucking waiting, man. I, I mean, I, I'm sad that Chadwick Boseman passed away, but it's like, hey, what the fuck? You know, the mantle of Black Panther, it can get passed down to somebody else. It's a mantle. We can give it to somebody else. Like, we need another motherfucker out there. Uh, but I digress. Uh, Eyes of Wakanda is what we're getting, I guess. Uh, that's another thing. They got the Echo Show coming out, too. I don't want to watch a show about a uh, fucking uh, Daredevil side character. I want to watch a show about Daredevil. I don't care if he's also in the show or if Kingpin's also in the show. Don't try to tease me with that, that you're going to see his back or see him swing by in the background when people are talking. I hate this cameo porn bullshit. Just give me the thing that I fucking want. Give me the Daredevil show. Give me the Gotham show with Batman. Like, come on, man. Cut the shit already, dude. Jesus fucking Christ. <sighs> Sorry, I got, like, real mad there for a second. I got, like, actually angry. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, coming in on our uh, last story of the night, um, Saw 11 has been announced. That's right, Saw 11. We are going to continue the game. Do you want to play a game? We're going to continue the game. I wonder if this is going to be another prequel or if this is going to, you know, this is going to continue what we saw in Saw X, which I may add, Saw X was fucking, ugh, that gave, that breathed new life into the Saw franchise. That made me interested in Saw again and made Jigsaw an actual fucking uh, scary guy, a actual good character. Uh, yeah, I cannot wait to check out what they got for Saw 11, but I am interested, you know, how are they going to bring back Jigsaw? What's going to happen? Is it going to even follow Jigsaw? 
Uh, but I guess we'll find out September 27th, 2024, which isn't that far from now. You know what I mean? That's less than a year away, you know, so that'll be pretty cool to see what they got cooking. Um, again, why is this movie coming out in October? What's the deal? Why isn't Saw coming out in October, man? I want uh, Saw to come out in October, but I guess it's enough time, right? It'll be in the movie theater for a month, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I'm interested in that. I hopefully Carlos comes back. Carlos, no holla. Hopefully he comes back to avenge, uh, John Kramer and shit. He's, uh, that would, that would be crazy, right? Uh, the twist upon twist, right? Carlos is like a, uh, his little Mexican Robin protege that we just never knew about. He was the one making the uh, Billy puppets the whole time and shit like that. He comes out in like a twist of all twists and he's just like, Do you want to play a game, pendejo? He saved my life. Carlos, si hala! And he pulls a fucking lever and like a pit of acid or like lava falls on somebody. It falls on that blonde bitch from Saw 10, Saw X. Yeah, I want her to fucking die back. Bad. Jesus Christ, I want her to get her fucking comeuppance. Uh, but yeah, Saw 11, I'm interested. I'm there. I'm there September 27th, 2024. I'll be I'll be eating out of my uh, Billy the Puppet Saw receptacle. Uh, you will know, be like, oh, 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 eating, eating the popcorn and shit. Uh, but yeah, I'm interested in it. Can't wait to check it out. Um, but yeah, ghouls and gals, uh, that's pretty much all we got tonight. Uh, hopefully y'all enjoyed the show. Hopefully, y'all got informed, y'all watch the trailers, y'all don't go see Madam Web, watch uh, Beverly Hills Cop 4, go watch uh, Saw, go watch Civil War, uh, and Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, thank you for tuning in, I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.